So this is the third video in a series on minimum spanning trees. I've already looked at Kruskal's algorithm, the reverse delete algorithm, and now we're looking at Prim's algorithm. Now, full disclosure, lots of people like Prim's algorithm. I am not a fan of Prim's algorithm, but you need to make up your own mind as to which algorithm you like the most. So let's use uh, Prim's algorithm on this network. Now I've already drawn in my vertices here and the start of Prim's algorithm is identical to the start of Kruskal's algorithm. Uh, we're going to need to find the minimum edge. All right, there's a two here and a two here. So we're going to draw in that two. Okay. Okay. And now this is where it diverges. Now in Kruskal's algorithm, you would look for the next smallest edge, and it wouldn't matter where that edge was. Now, instead, our goal here is to join A and B to something on this network, to join A to B to C or to D or to E to, or to F, and do it with the shortest road possible. Okay, so what are our options? We could join A to F using a road that's six long. We could join A to D using a road, an edge that's five long. We could join B to D using an edge that's six long, or we could join B to C using an edge that's eight long. Okay, the clear winner here is joining A to D with a road or an edge that is five long. Let's do that. Okay, now the next step is to join a, B, or D to C, E, or F using the shortest road possible. So, first of all, let's consider uh, D. D can join itself to C, E, or F using 7, 6, or 3. 3 is a small number, so let's keep that in mind. B can join itself to C, E, or F. Let's see. It can join itself to C with 8. Uh, there's no other real connections there. Okay. What about A? A can join itself to F using 6. And that's all. It can't join to E and it can't join to C directly. So the clear winner here is D joining itself to C with an edge of 3. Okay. Uh, now we need to consider C joining itself to E or F. All right. C can join itself to E with 9. Ooh, yuck. Okay. D can join itself to E or F with 6 or 7. Well, clearly joining itself to E with 6 would be best. So that's better than the 9. So that's sort of our new winner at the moment. Uh, let's see. A could join itself to F using 6 as well. So that's pretty good. That's just as good as that. And B can't join directly to E and F. So I've got choices here. I can do A to F which is a 6, or I can do D to E, which is a 6. Uh, let's go D to E. Okay, uh, next up, we need to join something to F. And let's consider how can F join the network safely. Well, F can join the network using this road that's too long. F can join the network using this road that's 7 long. Or F can join the network using this road that's 6 long. It's clear that F should join the network using this too. And here we have our minimum spanning tree. Everything is connected and we have a minimum spanning tree. So we're going to try it with another one here, a slightly more complicated looking one. Uh, first step, join two vertices using the smallest edge. All right, there's a five here and a five here. Doesn't matter which one I use, I'm going to use A to D. Now, connect one more vertex, connect B, F, E, C, or G to A to D, uh, using the shortest edge available. So, I could, A, A connects to B with 7. All right, so that's one of my options. Or I could connect D to B with a 9. That's not great. I could connect D to E with a 15. That's terrible. Or I could connect D to F with a 6. 6 is smaller than 7, so let's use 6. Okay, now I need to connect A, D, and F to B, E, C, or G, one of those vertices. So I could, could, I could join F 
to G or E with an 8 or an 11. So I'm going to, 8's the winner so far. I could join D uh, to B with a 9 or E with a 15. 8's still the winner. 8's still good. All right. I could join A to B with a 7. Oh, wait a minute. 7's better than 8. So let's use 7. Let's join A to B with a 7. Okay. Next up, we need to join A, B, D, and F to one of these vertices. All right. So, B can connect to C or E with an 8 or a 7. Seven's pretty good. All right. So, let's keep 7 in our heads. A can't connect directly to C, E, or G. So, don't consider A. D, we don't need to connect to B because we've already connected to B. So D can't connect to C. D can connect to E with a 15. That's terrible. And D can't connect directly to G. All right. And F can connect to E with an 8, which is pretty good, or G with an 11, but it can't connect to C. The best number we've seen so far is B connecting to E, which is a 7. Okay, next up, we need to connect uh, A, D, A, A, D, F, B, and E to C or to G. Now, it's going to be easier to think about that vertex first and that vertex second. So let's look at C. C can connect to these things in two ways. It can connect using C to B, which is 8, or it can connect using C to E, which is 5. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, now let's consider G. G can connect using 9 or 11. Uh, it's pretty clear. Number 5 is the smallest. So C to E, 5. Finally, G needs to connect to all of these somehow. So G can connect using the 9 to E or the 11 to F. It should use the 9. And there we have a minimum spanning tree for this network using Prim's algorithm. Now, again, full disclosure, I am not a fan of Prim's algorithm. I feel like reverse delete and cross calls are definitely easier to work with, but you be the judge, you pick an algorithm and you run with it. That is minimum spanning trees.